Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, to another in our series, The Forces of Evil. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace and blessings be on each and every one of you. You may be wondering, why are we talking about the forces of evil? Shouldn't we be talking about the forces of good? Well, most of our lectures are about the forces of good. How we can do good, etc., etc. This lecture, or this series, lecture series, is on the forces of evil, not so that we may know the evil and do more evil, but that we may be aware of these forces of evil in order to protect ourselves from the evil and to do good. So in our previous two segments, we looked at the concept of evil in the world. How can we reconcile it with the concept of God being all-powerful and at the same time being good? And we also looked at the issues revolve, you know, related to it, which had to do with the fact that we understand things through their opposites, that we understand good by knowing evil. So evil has to be present for us to know good. We went and explained that in some depth. We further looked at issues that uh, related to things which are evil in and of themselves and things which are evil in and of themselves, but they create a greater good and things which are good in and of themselves. And what we said was basically, whatever Allah creates is good. It is either good in and of itself, produces good, it's good and it produces good, or it appears to be evil in and of itself, but it produces good. As to things which are in fact evil in and of themselves and produce evil, we said this is only in the case of human beings or the jinn, those who have an evil intent and do evil. However, even that aspect of evil is still within the overall scheme of good which God has created. Because for God to permit that evil to take place is for him to be directly or indirectly related to that evil. So it becomes a part of his creation. So where that evil is not going to produce a greater good, then Allah doesn't permit it to happen, just as many people plan evil things at different times in their lives. And they try to execute it, but they can't. So, in this case, God has not permitted it. In the cases where God permits it to take place, there are good results which we are not able to grasp, which we are not able to understand. But we realize that since God is ultimately good, there is good behind it, even though we may not be able to grasp it. God is all wise. Our ability to grasp his wisdom, the wisdom of the things that he does, is limited. Those things which Allah shows us, the end results, etc., we can ultimately see the good. But those things which are not shown to us, we just have to believe that ultimately there is good to it as we function in this world, recognizing there's so many cases of things where we do them, we accept them, not because of themselves, but because of the good that will come from them. We gave many examples before, that of harm which comes to us, but we accept that harm for the good which the harm will bring. You know, the trials and the difficulty. There is good behind it. We have it, for example, when we go out on a journey. The journey may be a very tiresome journey, long, arduous journey. We suffer on the way. However, where we're headed, the goal at the end of it all, is what we're seeking. So we will bear that harm, we will bear the difficulty, etc., because we want to get to that goal. We do that all the time in our lives. And this is why the Prophet warned us, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, saying, that the hellfire is veiled by pleasurable things, things which are pleasing to our desires. 
We find it pleasurable. We take pleasure from it. But what is behind it is hell. Evil. The greater evil. Whereas paradise, حجبت الجنة بالمكاره But paradise is veiled by things which our souls don't desire. Things which we find unpleasant. Things which we find difficulty with. For example, getting up in the early morning for prayer. It's difficult. There's difficulty there. But the reward be of, of it is far, is far greater. And that's the reality. That path to paradise is a difficult path. It's a path of striving, struggling with our desires, you know, uh, avoiding what is evil, though it may be attractive to us, though it may seem enjoyable, this is the path to paradise. This is the difficult path. And those who offer us shortcuts, who say, no, no, you can get there very easily, you don't need to do all this stuff, you know, just do this little thing or do that little thing or whatever, and you've got it. This is a trick. This is a satanic trick. The path to paradise is not short. It is a long and arduous path. The path of a lifetime. A lifetime struggling to do good. So, having looked at uh, some of the consequences of evil in this world, and we talked about it with regards to certain good which Allah seeks from us as human beings, whether it is worshipping Him, whether it is fighting in the way of Allah, jihad, uh, even if it is giving thanks. All of these things become manifest when something of evil comes to us. Things are taken away from us. Calamities strike us. When these things happen, then we turn to God, then we worship God, these different things. So, so we can find in it, in these calamities, benefits to our lives. Now, when we look at Iblis himself, as we said, he had a role to play in terms of Adam's disobedience. He had a role to play in that uh, initial error. And he was himself uh, disobedient in his refusal to bow or to prostrate before Adam in recognition of Adam's superiority. God has created human beings on a plane superior to that of the jinn. However, in this disobedience of Satan and its spilling into our world, it becomes a means of greater good. Human beings coming in contact with it, realizing their errors, turning back to God, and God forgiving them, this greater good is the reason for the creation of that evil element. To worship God, to praise Him, to be thankful to Him, to seek His forgiveness, to trust in Him, to love Him. All of these things become reality in our lives when we struggle with the forces of evil within our lives. Now, back to the issue of Satan. It is commonly misunderstood that Satan became a disbeliever. And, you know, we find in Surah Al-Baqarah, for example, when Allah describes Satan refusing to bow, فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ that they all prostrated, the angels all prostrated, except for Iblis, he who was a disbeliever. كَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ People commonly misunderstand, thinking that the reason why Satan became a disbeliever was because he refused to bow. That seemed to be the obvious reason. Now, the reality is that this is not the case. Satan's refusal to bow is an act of disobedience. That act of disobedience in and of itself cannot make him a disbeliever. Just as Adam and Eve's disobedience, when they disobeyed God, they didn't become disbelievers. 
And if, it were, if disobedience meant disbelief, then it would mean that the vast majority of us human beings were all disbelievers because we all make dis acts of disobedience. We all disobey God at some point in our lives, if not daily, regularly. Now, we don't become disbelievers because of acts of disobedience. This is the basic principle in the Islamic teachings, and that's why there is repentance there, which wipes out the disobedience, the acts of evil. In fact, even doing righteous deeds, as Allah said in the Quran, in al hasanat yudhibn sayat good deeds erase evil deeds. So, where, in fact, did Satan become, or where and why did, in fact, Satan become a disbeliever? Now, the reality is that his disbelief was due to his attribution of oppression to God. This is where his disbelief came. How is that? Well, when Adam, when, when Iblis said to God, I am better than Adam. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. What is he saying here? I'm better than him. Therefore, I should not prostrate to him. In fact, he's the one who should be prostrating to me. Therefore, the fact that you are telling me to prostrate to him, this is wrong. This is error. So in his refusal, he is in fact telling God, and this is how he argued, you know, I'm better than him. He's telling God, really, you're wrong in asking me or telling me to prostrate to Adam. And furthermore, when God uh, cursed him, he further challenged God. You know, give me a chance until the day that they're resurrected and I'll send them all astray. You know, he's firm in his disobedience. Adam, on the other hand, when he disobeyed, he turned back to God in repentance. God forgave him, but not Iblis. Iblis was firm in his disobedience. And this is the day, difference amongst people. You'll find people who commit errors and they're willing to accept their errors and to try to work their way out of it, get God's forgiveness, etc. And you have others who commit evil, make errors, and they don't want to recognize it. They look at themselves as being in the right, so for them, evil has become good, and good has become evil. So, what we find then is that uh, Iblis, or Satan's diso disobedience, did not lead to his disbelief, but the rationale behind it, the reasoning and the belief he had regarding it, that God had in fact oppressed him. God had in fact was unfair to require of him to bow to Adam. This is where the issue of disbelief comes. He is attributing to God uh, error, misjudgment, lack of wisdom, etc., etc. All of this going against the basic attributes of Allah as he describes himself being the most just, the best of judges, you know, etc., etc., etc. So, Iblis' uh, disobedience was not in fact the source of his disbelief, but his attribution of oppression and wrongness to God. This is where the act of disbelief comes. Now, when we look at the issue of uh, Allah creating Iblis, uh, and we said that there was certain good which came out of it, whether in the case of, of um, Adam, as we've seen Adam's uh, situation already, and the good which came out of it, or the other good which comes out in the world as a result of human beings disobeying God under the influence of Satan, etc. But turning back to God in repentance, that greater good outweighing the evil. The question uh, remains as to why did God uh, allow him to continue? Okay, he started this evil thing, evil ball rolling. Why allow him to continue because of the fact that the test of this life would continue until the last day of this world. 
So Allah chose to have Iblis around until the last day to be a constant source of that evil element to produce the good among human beings that was required of them until the last day of this world. And we find in Surah Al-Isra, 17th chapter, verse 62, where Satan says, arrogantly, See this one you have honored above me. Arrogantly, he's talking to God. If you give me respite until the day of resurrection, I will surely seize and mislead all of his descendants, except a few. But Allah wanted that few to be guided. And that few would become guided in the struggle with those satanic forces. So Allah gave him that respite, gave him that period of time till the last day of the world to create that confusion amongst human beings and draw some of them from the path to to sift out. It was a means of weeding out the good from the evil amongst human beings. You know, it was like a sieve with grain and it's used to separate the good from the bad. Similarly, Satan has placed, played the role of separating out evil elements amongst human beings from the truly good elements. The next stage that we need to look at is, is the way by which Satan wages war against human beings and the jinn. This is the next element that we will be looking at in our coming segment. We have understood the reason behind Iblis's creation, his presence until the last day, because that evil element is not one confined to the initial evil period, but will remain as a necessary element for identifying good, for sifting out the evil from the good until the last day of this world. With that, dear viewers, we'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment of the program. We hope that you continue to follow the coming segments in which we continue to look at the forces of evil in order to understand from them how to do good how to protect ourselves from the evil elements within our world. With that, dear viewers, I now bid you farewell. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.